Last time, we found ourselves descending the Wallago Steps, exploring Castle Sinclair, and failing to spot dolphins at Shannonry Point. In this episode, we'd be driving our camper van west from John O'Groats along Scotland's northern coast. Yet again, we were up early. What time is it? It's five to five. What are we doing? Watching the sunrise. Watching the sunrise. It's your birthday. I know. It's exciting. I hope this doesn't go into too much detail on my face. I can tell. It's 4K, so definitely. Okay. Our first port of call would be the town of Thurso, an opportunity to get some supplies and grab some breakfast. There's fog coming up. It's like San Francisco, but without a prison. Thurso did have a large Tesco's, the last we'd see for some days and it also had an excellent beach which allowed the dogs to get some much needed exercise. So you were saying that the most surprising thing um, is before we came and we were sort of researching uh, the room, maybe you, uh, that in my head I was kind of expecting there to be wall-to-wall -wall transport and like thousands and thousands of people doing the same room almost back to back but we've not really seen that. I mean there's long stretches where you're driving and there's no one around at all. I have got one camper van behind me currently and I think that's the first time it's happened since we left Edinburgh. So, um, yeah. The further west we travelled, the more the landscape began to shift and change. As well as the distraction of such a beautiful landscape, there was also the issue of the roads, which at times thinned to a single track. Kyle of Tongue Causeway was an unplanned happy accident, a quick stop that provided Columbo with another opportunity to go tearing off into the distance, ignoring every command we gave him. A mile or so east of Durness is Smoo Cave. In typical fashion, the waterfall that usually drops into the main cavern seemed to be out of action during our visit. I've seen the descent. There's no way you'd get me doing this at all. 
they had little like hats for the dogs. Do you think the dogs would be into the idea or? No. No. They'd have to get on a boat. Oh. To get from there to there. Slightly disappointed by the lack of dog-sized hard hats, we clambered our way to the top of the cliffs above the cave. Just having a breather again. Just checking out the view. Checking out the view. There's too many steps on this holiday. How's your vertigo? Sango Sands, our stop for the night, was only a short four minute drive from the caves. Perched on a cliff edge overlooking the ocean, Sango Sands had come highly recommended and it's great to report that the site lives up to the hype. An absolutely stunning location, and we seem to have bagged the best spot too. No one's gonna camp in your way today. I did actually say it's my birthday when I'm here. If I could have a good sea view plot, that would be amazing. They delivered. Now seemed as good a time as any other for Bridget to attempt to retake her Scrabble crown. Double word. Two directions. That is five, six, twelve plus eighteen. We're still winning. Bridget fighting a vertigo, we made for the viewpoint overlooking Sango Bay and Durness Beach. Michael baying it. <laughs> oh, you've got me to do that with my nose. I'll keep going round. I'm going round again, so don't do it this time. Does it look cool? Look like Will Smith. Resting again. Standing twenty four meters above the water line below and measuring 275 metres in length, the Kailescu Bridge is an impressive and imposing sight. Parking at the Wailing Widow Falls could be viewed as being challenging. It's a very popular destination and the roadside parking was exceptionally busy when we first arrived, but we were keen to see the falls, so we grabbed a coffee at the Kailescu Hotel before giving it another shot, and we were glad we did. The dogs did struggle over the terrain, and although it is rocky, the walk was relatively short.
arriving at Old Tundu gave us an opportunity to get some washing done while Quincy kept watch. Langoustine and scallops. I'm going to walk forward to eat So explain what this is. My dinner is looking at me. I've got to say, that place, I can't do a Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> so, all joking aside, that was exceptional. I think we had to drive about 40, 40 minutes down a single road track to get to this campsite. And you could probably argue that with food, you didn't really have to try too hard. But I would say, I'm 52. That's in the top five chicken and mushroom pies I've ever had in my You said life. top five pies in there. I dread to think how good their steak pie is. It weighed the same as a small baby. Their scallops were amazing. So, a win. So I would definitely come here. Very good, very good. What's your favourite uh, campsite that we've stayed at and why? Well, um, for looks and location and just kind of, thank you Quincy, probably Sango Sands. However, on a toilet front, which is important on these trips, uh, probably that first one in Inverness. Was it Inverness? It was. It was Inverness. Brown toilets, very modern. They had music in there, um, just very clean, very... That was the Ard Tower Caravan Ard Park. Ard Tower, that was it. But that was, uh, yeah, uh, amazing toilets. The pinnacle of your camping toilets luxury. Yeah, it, it set the expectations too high for everywhere else, mate. The Sango Sands probably for the way it looked and where we were. without struggling. Located just 12 miles south of Ullapool is Corrie Shallot Gorge, famed for being one of the most spectacular gorges in all of Scotland.
Our stop over that evening was at the Sands Caravan and Camping Site. Nestled against a bank of sand dunes and a spectacular beach, the dogs were treated to another opportunity to go hurtling across the sand whilst ignoring any and all commands being given to them. Yeah, let Clumbo off. Yeah, let's see what happens. We could be uh, checking in at Bad Call Bay. See, I'm making it a thing. He's off. He's off. He's off. He's, dis he's disappearing. 